Hello, and thank you for joining us as we discuss the COVID-19 vaccine myths versus facts. I'm Laura Wheatholder. I'm a registered nurse and community outreach coordinator for Blessing Health System. I'm joined by Blessing Hospital Chief Quality and Safety Officer, Dr. Mary Francis Barthel. Dr. Barthel, thank you for joining us. Uh, would you like to take a minute to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, thanks very much. Um, so again, I'm Mary Frances Barthel. I trained in internal medicine and I've worked as a hospitalist for 19 years in Wisconsin and in Illinois. I've been with Blessing since 2011 and as Chief Quality and Safety Officer since 2015. To support the COVID-19 pandemic response, I've led infection prevention for the hospital incident command system since its activation. Um, engaged in issues around COVID-19 testing, isolation, contact tracing, treatment and care, and vaccinations of patients and staff. Well, Dr. Barthel, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for all your work that you've done um, during this pandemic and, and throughout your time with Blessing Hospital. Um, sticking with the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, there's a lot of information available about the vaccine, but not all of it is necessarily accurate. So today we're gonna, I'll present some myths and then you can present the facts. So our first myth is that the COVID vaccine isn't safe because it was so rapidly developed and tested. So safety is the most important um, quality in vaccine approval and no steps were skipped. The FDA has very strict standards um, around monitoring. Um, they require a minimum of 3,000 participants, and the COVID-19 vaccine trials had 50,000 participants. Um, we're monitoring for safety on an ongoing basis as the vaccine is rolled out to the public, and all reactions are reported to the states and then to the FDA for analysis. Um, there's two independent advisory committees that reviewed the results of the initial studies, and it was on their recommendation that the FDA um, did offer the emergency use authorization. Wow, so uh, a very um, thorough process in approving this vaccine for use. Our yes. next myth, um, there are severe side effects associated with the COVID-19 vaccine. That's a myth maybe some people have seen. Can you talk about that? Sure. So the first thing to remember is the vaccine cannot give you COVID-19. There's no live virus. It is, it is absolutely impossible to get COVID from the vaccine. Um, the most common side effect is a little pain at the injection site. Um, and, and many people experience that similarly as they would a flu shot. Um, now there could be some short-term effects, including fatigue, headache, muscle pain, even fever and chills for about 24 hours, maybe up to 48 hours after the vaccine. Those side effects mean that your body is doing its job and making antibodies. So it's actually a good thing. And those side effects are norm normal, common and expected. Great, well, thank you so much for explaining that. Myth number three, the COVID-19 vaccine can alter your DNA somehow. Um, nope, that's not true. Um, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are mRNA vaccines. So mRNA technology has been used for over 10 years in cancer treatment. It just hadn't been applied to vaccine manufacturing yet. So it's been studied for more than 10 years and those mRNA give our bodies instructions to make um, a harmless piece uh, that looks like the spike protein on the on the COVID surface. And, and that will allow your body to make antibodies so that if you are later exposed to COVID <clears throat> and to the protein, um, that you will have an antibody response um, and prevent infection. Great, thank you for explaining that as well. Myth number four, if I've already had COVID-19 and recovered, I don't need the vaccine. So um, we know that, that COVID can um, cause a variety of symptoms. Some people get very, very sick when they get infected. Some people um, have very mild symptoms. Some people get infected with COVID and have no symptoms at all, and they don't even know they have it. Um, regardless whether you've had COVID or not, you would benefit from having the vaccine. 
Um, there are different types of immunity that, that you can get from a natural infection versus um, a, a vaccination. And so it, it does, we do continue to recommend to people who have had COVID that you do receive uh, the vaccine. You can receive the vaccine as soon as you're out of isolation, essentially from COVID, uh, which is usually 10 days. The only exception to that would be um, if, if a patient received the monoclonal antibody in treatment of COVID, and if they did, they would want to wait 90 days after that infusion to make sure that they're going to mount a good antibody response against the vaccine. Great. Our final myth that we're going to talk about today, once I've had the COVID-19 vaccine, I don't need to wear a mask or worry about social distancing. Well, I think ultimately that's everyone's goal, but we're not going to get there right away. Um, a large percentage of the population in the community would have to get vaccinated before we can be sure that the virus cannot be transmitted. Um, we know that the vaccine prevents you from getting sick with COVID. We don't know for sure if you can still carry it to others. And so um, until there is a large percentage of the population vaccinated where we can be um, comfortable that there's some degree of herd immunity, then all of the other restrictions continue. So social distancing, so keeping six feet away from others when possible, wearing masks when in public, and good hand hygiene. All of those uh, strategies should still be applied. Well, Dr. Barthel, thank you so much for helping us get the facts straight about the COVID-19 vaccine. We really appreciate your time and all the work you've done to help our communities get through this uh, pandemic. Now, you can find more information about the COVID-19 vaccine on our website, blessinghealth.org. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.